The following podcast is a Next Level production. I'd like to move for dismissal of all charges against my client. On what ground? Runa is the daughter of an elfin diplomat on Asgard and now in New Asgard. Did you know about this? As such, she has diplomatic immunity. She may have diplomatic immunity in New Asgard, but we are not in New Asgard. Panelers, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this is going to be a spoiler-full podcast about She-Hulk, Attorney at Law, Season 1, Episode 3, The People vs. Emil Blonsky. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. uh, Steve, why don't you give us this little synopsis that we got about Another short, another short and sweet one. Uh, she Hulk represents Emil Blonsky, a.k.a. the Abomination, but his parole hearing doesn't go as planned. <laughs> yeah, it's it an interesting. I, I'm I'm going to be interested when we get done to listen to Podcastica's uh, She Hulk cast and see what Penny thought of this. I don't know if this is normally how a parole hearing goes, but exactly, um, yeah, she has more of the legalese that goes on within. Uh, I would say within the courtroom as well as parole hearings. I would say mm-hmm. so. Uh, yeah, uh, we highly recommend. On House Podcastica, they do She Hulk cast with Penny and our friend Greg. Yeah. So if you want to get more of the legalese and their fun stuff that they do too, because they do a weekly poll, which is pretty funny and cool. But uh, yeah, check them out when you can. We just like to talk about the episode stuff that's pertaining from the comic to the show itself, which is fun at times. And. Uh, yeah, with that, we're, we're just going to move right along into our initial thoughts. So, Steve, what were your initial thoughts? I just, I, I'm loving each episode. I think the, the pilot was was great. The second episode, I enjoyed the second episode. It was really good. But this one, wow. This one, I really, really enjoyed it. It was really funny. Had some great comedic moments in it. Um, it moved the story and it opened us up to, at the end there, opened us up to what looks like potentially the larger story that we're going to be seeing. So I'm, I'm excited uh, yeah. to, to moving forward with this one. Yeah. I, I, same here, but it opens up a lot of doors to more MCU stuff that I noticed. Mm-hmm. And we'll talk about that when we get into it. But overall, I, I thought it was a good episode. It made me laugh a lot of like, <laughs> like instances that happen within the courtroom, especially with the, uh, the elfish person from new Asgard, (laughs) as well as, uh, Emil and his, uh, him able to transform and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, there are a lot of key things that happen within this that I just like, I laughed, had a good time with, and I'm glad what they're doing. This is more of a comedic, more adult comedic aspect Mm -hmm within Disney plus too, because uh, we've already mentioned it before when we already recorded for the past two episodes that, you know, this is more of an adult oriented show more than any of the other uh, like Disney plus uh, Marvel properties that are out there. Mm -hmm. And I really do enjoy it. Yeah. And I loved, I absolutely love the fourth wall breaks that we get in this one. Uh, I've got them (laughs) listed in my highlights because they were all really, really good. They are really good. And that I just love the fact that they are actually doing that. And let's start forth with our uh, highlights, uh, our top highlights. So you want to start us off? Sure. Uh, I'll start out with Wong. I know we're going to talk about Wong. We're probably going to talk about <laughs> Wong throughout the, the episode because he comes into play several times. But I love – and I, I I actually didn't realize I started to watch a YouTube video. I think it was New Rockstars uh, on this on this episode before I realized, wait, I can't watch this yet. I've got to wait to podcast on because I don't want to be tainted. So I did get a little bit of information from, uh, from a YouTube video, but mm-hmm. uh, I did also pause it on this scene to, to make sure they were correct. And uh, his LinkedIn page does show that he was a target uh, sales representative in Karmataj. Karma- How do you say that place? Karmataj. Karmataj. 
It's Karma Chameleon, whatever. Uh, um, see, uh, it's K A M A R dash T A G. Okay. Karmatage. Karmatage. Okay. Uh, I just love the, the scene when he, when he comes into the office and he's like, uh, he's like, we need to talk. And she gets a chance to get out of that meeting that we'll probably talk about Dennis and his issues, uh, oh. <laughs> later. Uh, but she gets out of that meeting and so she talks to Wong and he's like, uh, she's like, no, I'm not the one who's going to be, you know, prosecuting him. I'm trying to defend him to get him out of jail. You just did something that's going to keep him in jail. Mm -hmm. And he's like, he does the whole, should we put him in, in the, the mirror dimension? She's like, or he's like, I'm not, I'm not going to stop time. I'm not going to turn back time so that we can reverse it or something like that. She's like, no, I don't want you to do that. That would be yeah, completely unethical. unethical. <laughs> yeah. 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 I just I, love, and, and he's like, I'm not doing that again. Cause there's a whole, that's a whole bunch of trouble, you know? But, and but he, his whole thing was saying that he, it, it was him for his training to be the sorcerer supreme. That was yeah, his yeah. whole but training. He, that first meeting just shows us that he has a uh, he really has a comedic, which we've seen a little bit of the comedic side of him. Yes. But man, Benedict Wong just play. It's Benedict Wong playing Wong. I, I love how in the hearing she's like Mister Wong, and he's like, no, it's just Wong, Wong. the Sorcerer <laughs> Supreme, the Master of the Mystic Arts, the Defender of the whatever you know. And I'm like, yeah. oh my god, this guy is just he's just and he like he does the whole nose. He she's like, okay, we'll do. Uh, he's like, uh, we'll do. Wizard craft as plan B, and then he touches his nose. She's like, "No, don't, no, no wizard craft." <laughs> so, you know, I just the whole thing with him, and then when he's in the hearing, and they tell him that he committed a crime, and he's like, mm, "I shall depart," and then he just leaves. <laughs> I'm like, meanwhile, well, he is he can actually be prosecuted too. Yeah, but yeah. they can't find him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, I just really thought the whole whole thing was great. He gave his testimony, yeah. um, and and we'll talk some more about the 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 hearing. But yeah, just just Wong in general was just a, a treasure to watch and and to see him act up. Uh, and I love that you know one of the fourth wall breaks that I'll talk about later. But in the car when she says, "I know you're all excited to meet Wong," you know, <laughs> so <laughs> I thought it was just great. Yeah, so Wong is my is is my uh, first highlight. Yeah, Wong is very incredible within this uh, particular episode, and I, I'm so glad we got Benedict Wong coming back to uh, reprise his character as Wong, mm -hmm. and the fact that it's like you know. He kind of just leaves abruptly as soon as they say, well, you, you cater to the, uh, you know, breaking out a prisoner. And I was like, I have to leave. And he yeah, just, you... like, gets his sling ring and he leaves. Yep. But the fact that we get a lot of callbacks to uh, Spider-Man No Way Home and Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, too. Mm -hmm. uh, so it kind of links everything from the MCU into the Disney Plus stories uh that we oh got. yeah they're they're definitely hitting us over the head with the with yeah. the making sure making sure there's no question that this this show connects to the mcu like they're making sure we know 100 percent that like every episode has had something give us a connection to the to the mcu and i wonder if one of the reasons they did that is because you know moon knight didn't have many, anything anything really that connected it to yeah. the MCU and then Ms. Marvel had just some minimal things where they talked about some things and then of course the whole mutant thing at the end so I, I wonder if that was one of the things they really wanted to hit home in this in in this show was that this is part of the MCU we don't yeah, we're yeah, make it, sure that it's literally hitting us over the head with a hammer saying hey mm -hmm. uh, this is part of the MCU so I, I think with those particular characters like Moon Knight and Ms. Marvel we're definitely going to see them later on I would hope so. And the fact is, is that with this, they're able to be like, all right, we're catering more to the adult viewers that are out there, the, the people that grew up on these comics. So kind of mm -hmm. like catering to you and myself. And, you know, mind you, this is like 50 plus years of comics, but we've grew up on these comics. And now we're, we're getting the things that we love. And, mm -hmm. One of which uh, I, I just love, too. One scene that I really enjoyed was Emil's parole board hearing. Oh, God. Saying that so he good. has been re rehabilitated, plus he has his soulmates there watching outside through the glass, all eight of them. You know, because he <laughs> seven, got... Seven. Oh, it was seven? Okay. Yeah, it was seven, yeah. All right. 
but uh, they they were all out there, and it just kind of gave me that whole uh, Manson feeling of like them following somebody who's in prison. <laughs> but you know, honestly, you know, yeah, Emil is not as bad, but he you know he did mess up downtown Harlem with uh, Bruce <laughs> when they they battled, and they kind of referenced that too in the last episode. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, then we have Jen protecting him or, you know, uh, literally, you know, her his legal format. And he pleads with Jen to help for uh, a pro, of course, with Wong being there as like uh, somebody that was there to provoke him and get him out well, of he prison. Was the key, yeah, he was the key witness to, to let them explain, you know, why he was, that he escaped and that he came back of his own free will. He chose to come back. That was, that was the key to getting him on parole, I think. Yeah. And the fact that he, he says, I've been re rehabilitated, uh, we'll go into our quotes later, but the fact that he talks about certain things, uh, Jen talks about like a farm that he had started he wants to do meditation and things of that nature, which is pretty cool because it goes back to the uh, the first episode too. Mm -hmm. Namaste, my right. yeah. butt holding is toned. your farts. <laughs> yeah, holding your farts. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I I think that's pretty cool. Uh, but it shows them, you know, uh, Emil actually shows them that uh, he could actually transform into the abomination anytime he wants. Yeah, which I, I thought laughed. was was pretty cool for the fact that in the comic books, he's never able to do that. Mm, okay. And I think that is one cool comic book change that they did yeah. within this so that he's able to change just like Bruce is or Jen is to, mm -hmm. you know, change into that form. Now, mind you, he has to wear a robe and he had to take off his Crocs. Apparently, he was more important, you know, more yeah. aware about his Crocs than he was his, uh, his like, like jumpsuit prison that he was wearing. Yeah, his prison, yeah. And he had that, he had that blanket right there ready. But uh, yeah, that was great. I love that whole scene. Uh, all the people, you know, it's one of those things. It's, it's interesting that we got this because I, I don't know. Tim Roth, again, it's just so good. And like I said, oh, he's amazing. I, Every time I laughed, every time hearing his voice coming out of the abominations body there, because it's just so just just incredibly hilarious. But, uh, you know, all the, the different witnesses that came on his behalf, you know, we have that guard who mm -hmm. he says he, he saved his marriage. We have the one yep. woman saying uh, the prisoners aren't making uh, toilet wine anymore. They're making toilet kombucha. Yep, um, yep. Yeah. Carl you know, was the, there. Yeah. Carl, I loved Carl. <laughs> yeah, the library. The library is no longer just a quiet place to shiv people. You know, I just uh, uh, all of it was 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 great. But uh, yeah, it, it was it was really really cool. You know, the one thing that I did think of the, the, my third watch was, you know, he could have given them a bit of a warning, but of course, then we would have lost the comedic moment of him yeah. turning into the abomination. He could have said something, but I, I wonder, and part of me wonders if Jen knew that he could do that because she was trying to kind of trying to tell him not to, or whether she figured out what he was knew what he was going to do as soon as he started to to do it because uh she was trying to stop him and but it ended up being a great again a point for his for in his favor for being yeah. on parole because he says look i can control my transformation I, it's not i'm not out of control so yeah that was that was really really cool i love that whole thing yeah which makes me think too because we've seen sneak peeks before about you know the the whole show and they show him leading a bunch of other super characters or whatever within this like uh uh oh was like, that in one of the trailers one yeah of the trailers? they oh, have okay. like an it's... aa thing where they're all together uh. in a roundabout which is pretty <sighs> funny so <laughs> i wouldn't be surprised is this is pretty much his uh meditation or whatever it is yeah his group that he does that's so great. i'm looking I, forward I to, to seeing what that comes to yeah. be but tim ross you know honestly he, he's a legendary uh actor he, he was in Reservoir Dogs, which is one of my favorite films. Uh, Pulp Fiction. He, he's done so much other movies, too. Mm -hmm. But uh, Reservoir Dogs and, you know, and Pulp Fiction are the ones that I go to because uh, I just love how he's able to uh, carry himself. Actually, mm -hmm. too, in Reservoir Dogs, uh, not, was it, no, Pulp Fiction, he talks about the thing. about No, that's Reservoir, yeah, Reservoir Dogs. No, yeah, no, 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 just... no. It's Pulp Fiction. 
No, it's Reservoir Dogs because he's describing Cabot to the other the other cop. Oh like, yes, says, okay, yeah. I thing. got it backwards. <laughs> yeah, he says, "Imagine the thing that's Cabot." I just like because it's one of my favorite movies. Well, I just rewatched it a couple days ago, and it's just oh, like okay, cool. it's the thing. <laughs> The mother, thing. mother effa looks like the thing, <laughs> you know. Uh, but I, I just love him and what he does. But you can tell the difference between now and from the Incredible Hulk because you know Tim has gotten older, so mm-hmm. you can see the gray hair. His hair's got a little bit longish. Uh, you can see he's gotten older. Yeah. So uh, same thing with what they did with uh, with Mark Ruffalo, and you can mm-hmm. see that including on the uh the the first episode of She-Hulk because you can see he's gotten older. Yeah. And I'm glad that they make it in continuity. It's not like, oh, hold on, we're going to dye their hair, we're going to cut their hair back and hide their wrinkles or anything. Yeah. My my feeling is I I love how they're keeping it within continuity. Mm-hmm. And uh I really think with what's going on with Emil with this and his release uh, um I'm I'm starting to think more and more that uh, what's her name at the end of uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Uh, oh yeah, what is Julia Louise Dreyfus's character? I'm forgetting her name. Oh but yeah, I can't. It was that long. She had that really long. Yeah, name. exactly. So yeah, Countess, my, whatever princess. Yeah, or, I, I think she has something to do with bringing the Thunderbolts into to play. And mm-hmm. I, I have a funny feeling that's what's going to happen with uh, Emil Blonsky in this and uh, where he's going to stand within. Because we are guaranteed, a uh, of all things, a movie. Mm-hmm. And it's okay. going to be called, oh, what's his name? Oh, Thunderbolts. Right. There we go. Okay. Yeah, so we're going to get the Thunderbolts eventually. If you look at the comics, they do actually have the Thunderbolts and abomination is in there it's kind of like a suicide squad but the thing is is that they don't have bombs strapped to their heads it's like they're doing okay. things because they're like an organized group so yeah. i'm thinking that's what they're leading to which would be amazing too because i'm curious we already got the fake captain america we're gonna get emil mm-hmm. uh we already got florence florence pew as uh black widow's sister mm-hmm. she's gonna be in there so I'm curious as to who else we we get. Uh, I'm curious. Uh, yeah. it, to me, I, I could see what Marvel's concocting at this point, but I, I'm looking forward to it as we go along because, uh, you know, uh, these are adaptations of comics into the cinematic universe as well as Disney plus Marvel shows. Mm-hmm. And I really do enjoy that. And, Um, Well, you know, there's complete differences. And as a comic fan, yes, I understand that. But I just love the aspect that we, you know, it's like at least Emil's able to transfer himself back into his human form and then go straight to Abomination, which we do get classic Abomination with the wings. We've mentioned that when we talked about Shang-Chi. But yeah, I'm, I'm loving that we get this kind of play. Mm-hmm. On on these Marvel characters that we got, and the uh, cinematic as well as the Disney Plus. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, let's talk about Dennis for a minute here. Um, <laughs> Dennis and, and Runa. Uh, this was just a hilarious. This whole sequence with with him was just hilarious. I've got one of his quotes as my quote uh, later on. One of my quotes later on. But right. uh, I just I, I just love how this whole thing turned out. I love that moment. You know when he leaves the office and Pug is like, okay, uh, I'll start building a case. And then he suddenly comes back in, and it's it, and I, it's obvious to us, the viewer, uh, you know, on my second third watch. But that first time he comes back, I'm like, as soon as he starts talking, I'm like, something strange here. You know, and and of course it ends up being Runa and she, and she, she just, then she changes into pug and she walks past the, the women in the, in the kind of the bullpen area there. And it just, uh, then in, in the, in the hearing, I loved uh, everything in there about, they're all like, they're like, no, he couldn't believe that she's Megan the stallion, you know? And then later when Runa comes back as the judge, and she's banging the gavel and it's just <laughs> it was just outrageous comedy that i loved and yeah. it just every time i watched it i was just like this is just more and more hilarious and then i loved that moment in the bar when he comes and he sits down next to nikki and he's like 
oh dennis and he says the guy's whole name i think and they're and nikki just pushes her drink over to him and goes here you're gonna need this you know and then he finally gets jen to give her testimony and he's like you know did you work with him and did he tell you about his uh romantic life his dating life and she's like yes even if i didn't want to know he would tell me and she's like yes he would be delusional enough to believe he was dating megan the stallion exactly so, and he thought at the very end that he had a shot at the real yeah do you think person. I should go back? Yeah. I just, <laughs> no, you shouldn't. I like, Pug is like, no, you shouldn't. I just was, the whole thing with Dennis, he's in his cyber truck. I wanted to look up what a cyber truck is. Is that like some kind of Hummer or something? I'm or, assuming. <laughs> so I wanted to look it up. I didn't, I didn't do it this afternoon. Uh, yeah. So I just, everything with Dennis, every week he goes, he gets more and more. And, it, you know, it's a it's a comic show, so yeah. these characters are going to be over. We're going to have the over the top, over the top, yeah. And and that's what he is. Is he's that over the top character of of the the misogynistic, egotistical man, arrogant, and, and everything. And I just love every week being able to just hear. I can hear Greg in my head say "f off, Dennis." You know, so <laughs> uh, yeah, Dennis was my next one just to kind of talk about. I had a left too that they actually used the actual fact that Runa was an elfin shapeshifter from mm-hmm. New Asgard. I thought that was hilarious. Yeah. And and she apparently has diplomatic immunity, but it doesn't work outside of New Asgard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. within illegal. So that's where Penny comes into play. So does that really work? So Penny, we leave that up to you on House Podcast to go for She Hulk cast. So yeah. listeners Go there if you want all the legalese, because she'll <laughs> break it down big time. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I just love how the, the judge dismisses the ruling and puts it into trial due to the issues with Runa. And then basically the judge thinks Pukowski is, honestly, he's an idiot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, later on we see that, you know, it's like, you know, he winds up winning the case to some degree. Yeah. How- is he going to really be able to collect the money, though? Think I don't it. think That's- so. <laughs> She's got <laughs> <don't> no money. <laughs> so Unless she kind of shape shifts and uh, literally swindles somebody else out of their money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but she got her, you know, her Volkswagen Passat paid for <laughs> and everything else. <laughs> Oh, all right. Yeah. So that, that was with me. You actually took a lot of my, uh, my thoughts about it, especially with oh, Jen's sorry. testimony. No, no, no. <laughs> it's fine. I, I thought it was pretty funny how it's like how she broke it all down at the very end saying how much of a delusional idiot he was. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I thought it was pretty mm-hmm. cool. Uh, the only thing that I got was, uh, well, Jen breaks the wall talking about, uh, you know, the cameos for us. I love that one for us to remember that. It's her show, regardless of the cameos. And yes, I know you want to see Wong. And she know, she goes, except for, you know, uh, my cousin Bruce, uh, Blonsky, and uh, there was one other, too. But it's just like, she realizes, like, oh, crap. It's it's more about me than it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I love that moment in the car when she's talking to the camera and she's just, in, like you said, she's breaking the fourth wall. She's telling us, reminding us of all the cameos that we've had throughout the first three, these three episodes. Mm-hmm. And then I think, and I, I'll have to, I'd have to go back, but I think almost every time there's been some sort of a, a line that leads into She-Hulk, you know, to the, to the She-Hulk attorney at law. Uh, graphic coming up at the beginning. So I, I have to go back and watch that. But because she says something about, you know, remember whose show it is, and then it immediately goes to the graphic, the She Hulk Alternate Law graphic, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. And it it really boils down to that, I think. Well, this is her show. Honestly. Exactly. Exactly. Uh the other two um fourth wall breaks that we had, or there's actually a third one. I think there's a third one in there, but I'll talk about that when we get to notes is uh, when she's I'm in the already bar, in notes. <laughs> uh, when, when she's in the bar and uh, she's, uh, she looks at the camera and she says, we're connecting the A and B stories. I just thought yep. that was really great. That was uh, pretty cool. Yeah. And then that moment after Dennis says something about, man, I wish we could just take away her powers. And she kind of looks at the camera and goes, did Dennis Bukowski just give me an idea, but that's just between us. And then, cut away from it so i don't know if she's i don't know if emil changed her mind with what he said at the end or if we're actually going to see her try to get rid of her powers well that'll that, be that's interesting. part of his release is that uh kind of like a restraint 
And if you remember at the very end of his uh, release, that's yeah, they part- said he's going to have to wear a restraint, right? Yeah. yeah. So that that's something that Bruce probably came up with, or something that they were able to fabricate from what Bruce mm-hmm. did, which he didn't do for Jen. Because he said, oh, it, it's a prototype, and it's only, for, uh, like, calibrated no, to me. Right, but I, I think it's different. I think what, what the parole be- I think what the parole people are talking about is like what we've seen in other superhero shows, where it's an inhibitor to, to not let them use their powers. Even mm. though he can choose to change, I think she actually wants to have her powers taken away. Not just oh, yeah, she does, yeah. That she wears. But he's going to, I think that's just something they do for all super, all their superhero villains or super villains that they release is they put some sort of inhibitor on them that they can't use their powers. That's what that, that's what I took from it anyway. Maybe All it's right. something else, but that I took from it that it was something normal that they just they just normally do for super villain parolees. Because you know there's gotta be super villains in there or super powered villains in there who do get released. Yeah. You know, uh whether it's on parole or just finish their time or whatever. You mm-hmm. know, they've got to have some way of restraining them. So um, yeah. That's that's what I took from it. Um, but yeah, then so that's the there's one more that I think um, she has, and that's when we get the we get the indication of the larger story when those guys attack her uh. in the alleyway, and uh, <laughs> she's she's struggling with the first guy, and I, I'm kind of surprised it took the guy that long to get the syringe to her because she gave him a several seconds before she went, oh wait. And then she transformed into <laughs> She Hulk, you know, and fought those guys. So uh, yeah. and I, I can't wait to, for us to find out who this boss is that they called. And uh, I know you probably know more about who these guys are from the comics, right? Well, they are the Wrecking Crew. And that's literally what they are. They represent the Wrecking Crew. And in the comics, there was uh, three of them, if I recall. Mm-hmm. And they did not have. But this looked to me like they had. I loved it. She said, "What did you do?" Wait, I got it. In my quotes. Did you guys rob an Asgardian construction worker? That's exactly it. And oh. they all just stop and they go, "Yeah, <laughs> so- yeah, literally." But the the funny thing was is in in the comics, the Wrecking Crew were. Uh, I'm gonna look this up because I didn't really think about this until just now. Okay. Wow. Well, while uh, you're looking at while you're looking that up, I'll I'll, I'll go on to another point so we can you know, stop the stop the music here. Um, is I thought it was interesting. She, Emil gives her that line there at the end where he says something like, uh, like you know, well, you're not going to be able to stop the the press, so you might as well just embrace it. And so the next scene we see is her doing that interview as She Hulk. And when the guy calls her She Hulk, she says, "Well, my name is Jennifer Walters," and and she goes, "And my client was Emil Blonsky, not the Abomination." And I, I just love that whole moment where the guy's like, "Well, how did you come up with the name She Hulk?" She's like, "Well, really, I didn't." Um, so, and we talked about that last episode that she's kind of stuck with it with it now. But uh, I just thought that was interesting that that on one hand she seems to be kind of embracing the yeah. She Hulk persona, but there may still be this underlining thing of of wanting to get rid of her power. So we'll see how that plays out in the coming episodes. Yeah. To uh, give you a little brief synopsis about the wrecking crew, who they were in the comics in comparison to this, obviously uh, the wrecking crew is made of the wrecker bulldozer pile driver and thunderball. So there was four of them. Yeah. And And that, I don't think any of those names are the names that he called that guy in the van. No, he didn't at all. Yeah, he he called the guy the guy something. Yeah, th- this will be basically uh, Disney Plus's version of the Wrecking Crew. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Disney has done this before on Agents of Shield, if you remember way back when, in the very beginning of Agents of Shield, uh, they did a version of the Absorbing Man, not the uh, Ang Lee version that we got from Nick Nick Nolte, <laughs> of all things. And, uh, yeah, this one is, uh, you know, like we got record bulldozer, pile driver and thunderball, uh, in the comics, they were introduced in the defenders issue number 17 in 1974. And they were, think about a wrecking crew and what you have. Oh, I These, guess he did call him thunderball. Cause I'm looking at IMDB now and I guess he did call oh, him thunderball. So, okay. But you know, obviously, they have their own 
their own abilities. In the comic, you know, the team's leader, who is Wrecker, is indestructible, has a crowbar with magical properties, and he basically hates and fears Thor. Bulldozer was an armored hel- uh, metal helmet and fights by ramming his victims head first. Pile Driver fights with his oversized pile driving fists. Thunderbolt, well, Thunderbolt is a thinker of the team and wields a huge demolition bowl on a chain. Very, very similar to uh, what the Absorbing Man did. Mm. But uh, these were very much uh, the characters within the comic, which is okay. interesting. But uh, honestly, these are different iterations of what we got from the comic to this because they've adopted properties, either either from New Asgard or um, the Chitarian. Oh, think about it. Uh, look what the Vulture did. and. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, she did. He did say, yeah, when she said, "Did you rob an, uh, an Asgardian construction worker?" He did say, so, "Yeah." So, so basically, I think they got yeah, it from Asgard. Yeah, so they basically got it from Asgard, but it's kind of following through with that that premise that uh, they they're they're stealing, kind yeah. of like what the Vulture did. What mm-hmm. Michael Keaton the Vulture. Yeah, here it's a little different because they're working for somebody, and we just exactly. Don't and yet, I wouldn't so. be surprised because there is slated for a cameo later on by the one and only Charlie Cox, who is Daredevil. Mm-hmm. And who is his ultimate nemesis that we remember from the Netflix show? Yeah, yeah, it could be. And we could, we could when see. was the last person that we saw that nemesis? And Hawkeye. Right, right. So I wouldn't be surprised if it was the Kingpin. Yeah, uh, it could be. I, I think I think you're right. I think you're, you're hitting the nail on the head because I think with all the different cameos, and I think that's going to be kind of the hook, at least for the first season of this show, is all the cameos we're getting every episode because she plays on it there at the beginning. We already talked about that. Yeah. Um, the only other, the, the only other note I have that we haven't discussed yet is the bonus scene <laughs> that I thought was just hilarious. <laughs> and when Holloway sees them through the glass, he's just like, Hmm. Huh. And they're, they're in there twerking. And I love the, the last line where uh, she says, uh, Megan says, you're so much fun, more fun than my last lawyer. And, and Jen says, I will kill for you, Megan D. Stallion. And Megan says, dial it back. So I just thought <laughs> that was really cool. Dial it back. You know, so, uh, yeah. And it looked like they were signing some paperwork. So she's going to, I don't know if that means uh, she's going to come back in later, in later episodes. Uh, as a client, but obviously she was signing She-Hulk as either something to do with her legal, you know, legal, yeah. legal side. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's the only thing, other thing I've got. Um, the only other I have a I have one quote here that we mm-hmm. haven't done yet. All right, um, and that's Dennis when Mallory. I think it was Mallory. Uh, when Holloway tries to offer him another female lawyer, Dennis says, <laughs> yeah, no, I can't talk to a 10 about a mar- embarrassing man stuff. She might be my next fiance. And she's just like, I'm out of here. You know? Yeah. Yep, yep. I, <laughs> I had that too. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was I cannot hilarious. Get out of this, this, I cannot get out of this situation fast enough. So. Yep. <laughs> oh, I, I have one quote too, which is from Emil himself saying uh, when he's asked if he feels re- rehabilitated by the board, and he states, let's start by saying that I feel remorse, great shame, that I'm harmed so. To answer your question, I, I feel I have been rehabilitated. I've spent every day of my incarceration focused solely on my redemption. I have changed emotionally, physically, metaphysically, spiritually, karmically, cosmically, interdimensionally. And then Jen just cuts him off going, uh, <laughs> etc. But... What Mr. Blonsky is saying is that this is not the same Emil Blonsky as before. So uh, I, I love th- it because that's exactly what she told him in the last episode when he was yeah. when he was being very arrogant about what he had done to transform himself. She said, "No, no, you need to be." Basically, she told him, "You need to be humble about mm-hmm. it. Show remorse and say all these things, but make sure you say it in a way." That's not puffing yourself up, basically, and that's what he did. But I thought it was just was just classic lawyering that she was able to convince him how to talk to the parole board. That was so good. All right, I, I have a few notes and a few comic references. So okay. uh, uh, the first one would be uh, well, this is like a callback to the first Avengers. So the chamber that Emil or Emil is in during the hearing is 
pretty much just like the one that in the original Avengers that they meant to use for Banner when they had him on the helicarrier. Okay. And they used it for Loki. But mm. ultimately, at the very end of that particular movie, it trapped Thor. And he had to, like, use his hammer to get out. And it was hard for even Thor to get out of. So it was pretty funny for the fact that it's like, but, you know, he had a chair, he had a little table, he had his water, he had everything else that he needed, a blanket, <laughs> mm-hmm. and somewhere to put his shoes. But I, I thought it was pretty cool. It was kind of roundish. If So if all you uh, Marvel fans out there, check that out and remember it, and then go back to Avengers, because I rewatched that not too soon, not too long ago. Uh you know, I, I just love the fact that, you know, Emma wants to do a, you know, open a meditation retreat on a farm. Mm-hmm. So I, about that. Yeah. 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 Easter eggs. Well, uh, Blonsky already mentioned it. You know, he uh, can, you know, he in the comic, he's not able to transform back to his human form. Mm-hmm. So hence his anger in the comics and his rage and focusing it on Hulk all the time. Now, I'm curious with Marvel's properties, will we ever get to see the leader? Because we've already seen the abomination for like what Shang-Chi and for this particular series. So we got abomination back at the very end of the incredible Hulk with Edward Norton. We do get to see the version or a person that be starts to become the leader. And I'm waiting for that to happen too. So I'm wondering if that, become something that they start to bring into because Marvel was able to uh, acquire a lot more of the universal rights for the Hulk industry. So I'm looking forward to that. That that would be amazing to see. Um, Another like kind of like comic book Easter egg that I, I have in my notes, the reporter states that, you know, Jen got her powers due to a mafia hit gone wrong. (laughs) <laughs> Which literally is what happened within the comics. So I, I find I find it funny that they use that and utilize it as a story. Within oh, that's the good. Yeah, I didn't I didn't realize that. I, I knew that you said she had been in the hospital and she got a blood transfusion, but I thought it was like from a car accident or something. But no, it was, it, was a, a, it was a gunshot wound. Okay. Okay. So yeah, so uh, I thought it was pretty cool, and the fact yeah. that you know, of course, Bruce just takes off in the comic. <laughs> and the yeah, we talk, and we talked about that about the origin story from the comics. Uh, before but yeah that is kind of cool they use it i thought it was interesting every time that somebody would say something that was like a rumor that reporter who's like i guess like the entertainment news kind of reporter would pick yeah. up on it and go and she was rejected from the avengers you know and yeah that, that to me said, there's, there's like, something related in there that i just didn't pick up and i'm like oh, i have to look at that and i didn't really yeah look i don't it. know if it's just a so a, a social news kind of thing because like i said one of the reporters asks were you rejected from the avengers and it's Suddenly she picks it up and goes, and she was rejected from the I'm like, oh, wait a minute. You, <laughs> you didn't even answer the question. And so there's lots of those kind of things. I love that that sh- that mo- little montage we got at the beginning of all the different news anchors talking about her, even down to like a Spanish entertainment show is talking about her. Yeah. Uh, so it was really cool to see all that. And uh, yeah, that, that stuff was great. As far as like uh, interesting news that uh, that came out regarding this particular episode, apparently uh, Tim Roth stated that it was a pleasure working with uh, Tatiana Maslany, and he thought all their scenes together were amazing. He was able to ad lib, but he didn't know exactly what was going to go into the episode. And I thought uh, you could find oh, that great. on I think it's comic dot com, so you could actually yeah. find that out there. That's pretty cool. I I I like him. I'm, I'm glad we're going to see more of him throughout the series. And she's same here. She's so great. It's it's really really good that she's getting the recognition. I mean, I think she did win an Emmy uh, for Orphan Black. At least one of the seasons of Orphan Black. I think she won an Emmy uh, yeah. for it. But she was so good on Orphan Black that it's just it, to see her in something else, and especially this something so big, yeah, uh, is just really a treasure. All right. Well, uh, that was pretty much our coverage. Podcast recommendations? I'll just go back to, we kind of already talked about uh, She-Hulk cast on Podcastica. I would recommend just go, if you've got your podcast player, I had to do this this week because I, I wanted to get the uh, the Cast of Rings podcast that Podcastica is doing. If you go to your podcast player of choice and you search for Podcastica, you should get all, they should all come up for you to see and for you to subscribe to. If you watch these shows, if you watch uh, House of the Dragon, 
If you're watching the Rings of Power, Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power, they have podcasts about those shows. In, in this month, they're going to be podcasting about uh, Cobra Kai. Uh, oh, yeah. Again, they have the She-Hulk cast. And all they're doing so many things right now that is just – that is just a great podcast network. Nothing against our podcast network. Our podcast network is great as well, but podcasting has got a lot of podcasts currently out there uh, running. So go to podcast.com or just search in your player choice for podcastica. Yeah, exactly. I don't have any podcast recommendations except for the ones that I'm on, but I'll talk about that when we get to that point. But uh, let's talk about how to people could actually submit their feedback since we didn't get any feedback on this. Well, we can be heard. Well, we already talked about it. We can be heard on your podcast player of choice, whether that be Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, or whatever podcast player you use. Uh, if you can give us a rating or a review on there, we would love to hear from you that way. Ratings are always great. Word of mouth is a wonderful way to get the news of Panels to Pixels podcast out there. So uh, if you can give us a rating or review, we would definitely give you a shout out uh, here on the podcast. And as always, you could go to our Panels and Pixels podcast.com website, uh, currently under construction. Sorry, still on the leave of absence, but I'm hoping that I get this up sooner or later. I'm going to be working with Daphne, hopefully, <laughs> and get that up and running and making 100%. Uh, yeah, I'm talking about Daphne from Run for Your Lives. So very nice. Cheap pop right there. <laughs> there you go. Uh, we are also on Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash panels to pixels. Uh, you can find us there. Like you can like us there. You can follow us there. We try to put out posts for what we're going to be doing uh, next. So watch for us there for the umbrella Academy and for shield. Exactly. And you could find us on Twitter at panels to pixels. So that's panels, the number two pixels. So at panels two pixels, we have an email address panels two pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels two pixels one. The TO is spelled out right in the middle and then the number one at gmail.com. And if you like YouTube, you could actually find us. All you have to do is search for panels to pixels podcast on YouTube. And if you like what we do, just subscribe, give us a thumbs up for the episodes that you like, and just follow us there. Uh, the more views, uh, the better. And on top of that, you might not just get regular content from which is basically the podcast on YouTube form, but you could get some celebrity interviews once we get them. We are on Instagram at Panels 2 Pixels Podcast, all spelled out. That's Instagram, Panels 2 Pixels Podcast, all spelled out with words. I don't know why I zoned out there for a second. That's okay. <laughs> All right, and we also like to encourage you to check out all the other podcasts on the Next Level Podcast Network. We highly recommend them all, including Wilhelm with Ben Beck, The Melting Pat, Podcast Zero, and so much more. All you have to do is go to nextlevelradioonline.com, check them all out there, and just follow the links and uh, subscribe. All right. Well, coming up next for us, you will be either hearing uh, the next episode of the Umbrella Academy Season 3 or She-Hulk Season 1. Uh, look for us out there on your podcast player feeds. And where else can listeners hear us, Steve? Well, I send various voicemails to uh, our friends' podcasts like Run For Your Lives. I've been, I've been a little remiss on theirs the last few weeks. I'm going to try to catch up uh, again here pretty soon, the next few weeks, uh, to pick up, pick up on one, Run For Your Lives. But uh, I send voicemails to our friends who do, uh, again, the Cast of the Ring. That's Penny and Blanky. <laughs> cast of the Rings uh, has... Uh, uh, Kristen. Yes. Oh, no, 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 no. You're talking on one. Yeah, okay. Cast of the Rings is on one and, and uh, another person... And then House Cast of Dragons is with Rima, Joe, and Kristen, Kristen. covering House of the Dragon. Those yes. two I send a uh, podcast to as well. So check them out on the podcasting network already mentioned. Awesome. And you could hear me on Adrenaline of the Cinema podcast where we cover everything action, adventure, fantasy, suspense, thriller, everything that gets your adrenaline going. Uh by this time, obviously, Predator 1987 will be already up. Uh, but look forward to Prey that just came out on Hulu not too long ago, where Steve and I covered that, as well as Predator 1987, as well as Omega Man. And <clears throat> that was a 1971 film. So uh, myself and Jerry will be covering that 
on uh, Adrenaline Cinema Podcast. You could also hear me on uh, the Podcastica Network on House Podcastica when we do Sandman Cast as we are covering each episode of the Netflix series Sandman. So we're doing this episodically, so I'm doing it episode by episode with our friend Jamie Dimmick. Uh, I've been keeping up with the comic as well as in comparison to the actual uh, episode so that there is some sort of comparison. So Jamie doesn't think I'm a complete buffoon and I, uh, I just watch the episodes. So I'm, I'm trying to keep up with my uh, comic book reading as well as watching the show and getting a good comparison within that. So uh, I, I think Jamie is a little bit better with it because she loves the comic and she loves the show itself. Our friend Lara is on for the last uh, episode, and that was amazing. That was fun. So check that out. So, uh, yeah, Sam and Cast on the House Podcastica or on the podcastica.com. Very good. Well, same podcast, different panel, different pixel. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this was Panels to Pixels, and we'll see you on the next panel. Good night. Good night. Good night.